Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up custom navigation on your AppSense applications and this is going to enable you customize the navigation experience for your users. My name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without further delay, let's get started. Alright, so to set up custom navigation, we would need two things. The first is the button group widget, so I'm just going to place this on the canvas right here. And the second thing we also need to do is to write a JavaScript file that would contain the logic for the navigation. So to do this, I'm going to create a new JavaScript object file and let us call this file utils. All right, so in this file, we would need two functions to handle um, the custom navigation. The first function is going to be a function that performs a check to see if a particular page is the current page. So let's call this function is current page. And this is going to be a function that will take a page as a parameter. All right. And, and here we have the function. So like I said earlier, this function is going to perform a check. So let's um, write the logic for the check. So the function will be checking if the page saved in the app Smith store is the same as the page being passed into the function. So this is going to be appsmith.store.page and it is going to check if that page is the same as the page name being passed into this function. So this is going to be page. If it is the same, the function is going to return true. Else, this function is going to return false. All right, so we have the is current page function built out. The second function we need here is a function to perform navigation. So let's call this function set current page and it will take a page name as a parameter and then do a couple of things. So the first thing we want to do here is to store that page to the absence store using the page key. So this is going to be store value and for the key, this is going to be page. And for its value, this is going to be the variable passed in or the parameter passed in. And then we can go ahead to perform the navigation. So this is going to be navigate to, and then we're going to navigate to the page name that has been passed in. So here we have the two functions configured. Now we can head back to configure the button group widget we have right here. So for the first button here, um, let's edit this to be for the home page. So let's call this home and for the disabled state, we can use the is current page function we just created um, not so long ago. So this is going to be utils dot is current page. And for the page value, this is going to be home. All right. For the icon, we can use the home icon. And when this is clicked on, we can go to perform a navigation using the set current page function and then passing home as its page name. All right, so we have the first um, navigation item, which is the home page. Let's go on to add a new navigation item. And this is going to be for the about page. So this is about. For the disabled state, similarly, we are going to use the utils dot is current page to perform that check. And this is going to be about. And for the icon, we can use the person icon. All right, and when this is clicked on, let's also use um, utils dot set set current page to navigate to the about page. All right, that looks good. And lastly, we have the uh, last page we'll be configuring, which in this case is going to be uh, the contact page. All right, let us set this to a simple button. And for the disabled state, we can use utils dot is current page and pass in contact. All right. And for the icon, this is going to be a phone icon. All right. And lastly, for the on click, when this is clicked on, we want to set the current page to be contact. All right. So this looks good. One last thing I'd like to do here would be to bring in a text widget to denote the current page we are on. So this is going to be home, for example, and I can go in to style this a bit. All right, and that looks good. 
So let's duplicate this page because the current home page has all of the configuration we need to create the About Us page and also the Contacts page. So let's go to the page settings, for example, and I'm going to call the current page home, all right? And then I'll need to duplicate this over, but let us hide this. I'm going to make it not visible so that it does not show up on the default AppSmith navigation bar. And I can duplicate this and duplicate it one more time. And for the first duplicate, I'm going to call this about. All right. And for the second duplicate, this is going to be contact. All right. And let's go into hide both of these pages. So this is hidden and this is hidden as well. And we can go in to take a look at the about page. So for this text widget here, let's call this about. All right. And for the contact page, uh, the text widget here should be called contact. All right, and that looks good. But there's a little bit of a problem here. The utils file we created was not copied over when the pages were duplicated. And that is because there's a small bug in the way JS object works right now. But hopefully by the time you're watching this, that bug would have been fixed and the files would be copied whenever you duplicate a page. So let's go into manually copy this file because you can see that we do not have the JS object file um, copied over when we duplicated the home page. So let's go into copy this file to the about page and I'm going to rename this to utils1 and let's head back to also copy this over to the contact page. And for this, similarly, I'm just going to rename to utils2. All right, so we have the navigation flow set up. And here we have the home page. So right now I'm in the editor view. I'm just going to switch to the preview mode. So let's click on the preview mode. And here we are on the home page. And I can click on the home button. And you see that the home button has been disabled. Now, if we navigate to the about page, you can see that um, right now we're in the about page and the about button is disabled. And same also goes for the contact page. We can keep playing with this navigation and you see that this custom navigation has been set up. You can go ahead to deploy the application, for example, and you see that the default AppSmith navigation bar does not show up. Rather, we have our customized navigation bar showing up right here. So I can easily go through the pages and we can see that this works really well. So this is how you can set up custom navigation for your applications on AppSmith. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section and that'll be all for today's video. All right, see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.